Welcome to EuroFootball Daily, where we're profiling 10 of the most exciting new managers in the game right now from across the continent and beyond. Let's go. 10. Andrea Pirlo We start off with the most intriguing managerial appointment, the arrival of the untested wildcard Andrea Pirlo at Juventus. The Italian may have been a maestro on the pitch, but by his own admission had never looked destined for the touchline. However, that all changed on the 30th of July, when he became the manager of Juventus's under-23s, before stunning everyone by being named the first team boss nine days later, following the sacking of Maurizio Sarri. The 41-year-old didn't even hold the necessary UEFA Pro license needed for the role. That was quickly sorted, with the former AC Milan conductor scoring 107 out of 110 in his thesis titled The Football That I Would Like. In it, he referenced the Barcelona of Johan Cruyff and Pep Guardiola, along with Carlo Ancelotti's AC Milan and Louis van Gaal's Ajax as his inspirations. It's too early to judge his results, but already Juventus look a much happier unit than the one Sarri left behind. A former legend returning to manage doesn't always work out, just ask Clarence Sadoff, but if Pirlo can practice as good as he preaches, then there's every reason for the old lady to be excited again. 9. Thomas Frank Over the past few seasons, Brentford have been led by the instantly recognisable figure of Thomas Frank. The classy Dane has transformed the West Londoners into one of the most electric sides in the championship, with an attacking flair which is the envy of most Premier League fan bases. But life wasn't always this good for Frank at Griffin Park. Having risen to the position of manager following Dean Smith's departure to Aston Villa in October 2018, the 47-year-old won only a single game in his first 10 in charge. However, a switch to a 3-4-3 formation earned him some much-needed success, and Brentford coasted to mid-table. Last season, Frank really left his mark, energising a formidable forward trio of Saeed Benrahma, Oli Watkins and Brian Mbomo, who helped the Bees outscore any other side in the championship. Though they would lose the playoff finals to Fulham, Frank was still named Manager of the Year at the London Football Awards thanks to his impressive transformation of the Bees. Ben Rama and Watkins may have departed this summer, but the former Danish youth coach might be the real jewel in Brentford's crown. 8. Danny Baus As Birmingham City began their search for yet another manager this summer following the departure of Pep Clotet, one name that kept emerging as a candidate was Danny Baus. That's down to the FC Groningen boss making quite the impression in the Eredivisie in what is only his first job in top-flight football. Under the 38-year-old, the Dutch minnows have evolved into an intriguing attacking unit, thanks to his focus on high-press, fast-paced football that champions the use of aggressive fullbacks. On the surface, Groningen's results haven't drastically improved beyond their normal mid-table expectations, but his ability to evolve the squad on a tighter budget than his predecessors while developing an attractive style of play has won him many admirers. This was highlighted by the fact that he even managed to coax a 36-year-old Arjen Robben out of retirement. This season, they've already defeated Ajax and are sitting pretty in seventh. If Baus can build on their early optimism and guide the Green-White Army into the European spots, then who knows where the future lies for the former Kilmarnock defender. 7. Graham Potter Graham Potter has emerged from the obscurity of Nordic football to become one of the most hyped English managers around. Over eight seasons, Potter guided the lowly Swedish outfit Ustersunds from the country's fourth division to the last 32 of the Europa League reaching the Allsvenskan and even claiming a historic Swedish Cup in 1617. Victory over Arsenal at the Emirates in 2018 made it impossible to ignore Potter's talents anymore. At Östersunds, the 45-year-old was famed for his unconventional methods. He encouraged his players to engage in community performing arts to put them outside their comfort zone, while on the pitch he became famed for his Spanish-inspired passing style and tactical flexibility. In 2018, he had a chance to test his methods in the UK with Swansea and didn't disappoint. Though they missed promotion, his team completed the most passes per 90 minutes of any side in the championship and used 10 different formations across the season. Now at Brighton, his mark on the Seagulls is obvious to see. Pep Guardiola even praised the former West Brom fullback for his seductive football, going on to call him one of the best English coaches in the game. High praise from a man who knows exactly what he's talking about. 6. Brian Prisk Another manager fully grasping his first major role in charge is FC Mitsjolland's boss, Brian Prisk. The former Portsmouth and Denmark defender has enjoyed unprecedented success since taking the reins at the Wolves back in August 2019. His first season ended in glory, finishing 14 points ahead of major rivals FC Copenhagen to claim Mitjolland's third ever Danish Superliga, with a win rate over 66%. It's a remarkable achievement considering he spent nearly seven years as an assistant at the club across two separate spells. 
Though Midtjylland haven't started amazingly in the current campaign, Prisk has already created history this season by guiding the Danish outfit to their first Champions League group stage. They went unbeaten through the qualifiers, taking down Bulgarian side Ludogorets, Young Boys of Bern and Czech giant Slavia Prague to reach the European promised land. It means the 41-year-old has the chance to test his methods on the toughest stage of all. And if he can get anything out of a formidable group featuring Liverpool, Atalanta and Ajax, then a greater side than Midtjylland could come calling down the line. 5. Roberto Di Terbi Next up is Sassuolo boss Roberto Di Terbi, who has recovered from a difficult start to become one of the most exciting managers in Serie A. Having impressed in the Italian third division with Foggia, in 2016 Di Terbi earned a top-tier job with Palermo. However, it arguably came too soon, as he was fired after one victory in 13 games in charge. By October 2017, he was given a second chance with Serie A Minos Benevento, though he couldn't save them from relegation. But fortunately, his possession-based football and intelligence in the transfer market earned him many plaudits, and Sassuolo were more than happy to take him on. Two seasons with the Nero Verdi have exhibited Di Terbi's football at its finest. Sassuolo have become a free-scoring outfit capable of mixing it with the best. In 2019-20, they finished 8th and were the 6th highest scorers, while De Terbi unearthed a gem in 20-goal-a-year striker Francesco Caputo, signed for just £6.3 million. Though their defending can be suspect, Sassuolo are a joy to watch. Managers come and go at a rapid pace in Serie A, so should any big vacancies open up soon, don't be surprised to see De Terbi's name in contention. 4. Eduardo Cadet South America should never be overlooked as the place to find the next rising talent on the sidelines. In the past, we've profiled River Plate's Marcelo Gallardo, but now it's the turn of Internacional boss Eduardo Cudet. The Argentine has enjoyed an excellent few seasons in management. In 2019, he captured the Argentine Primera División title with Buenos Aires-based Racing Club, his first major honour following spells at Rosario Central and Club Tijuana in Mexico. Rather than stay in his homeland, Cudet decided to hop over the border to Brazil and join Internacional and so far it looks like a great decision for all concerned. With a current win rate of over 56%, the People's Club are riding high in Serie A and look set to progress from their group in the delayed Copa Libertadores. Considering they haven't won the league in over 40 years, these are exciting times for the Porto Alegre outfit. His preference for a 4-1-3-2 formation may be unusual, but if Cudet continues to enjoy success, it may start to appear more on both sides of the Atlantic. 3. Ruben Amorim Portugal loves producing a managerial prodigy, and the next one destined for stardom looks to be sporting Lisbon boss Ruven Amorim. The 35-year-old has enjoyed a meteoric rise on the touchline since taking the reins of Braga reserves in September 2019. After just three months, he was the first team coach, winning his first game in charge 7-1 away to Belenenses. Ten days later, he claimed the Portuguese League Cup with victory over FC Porto, before guiding Braga to third in Liga Noche. His remarkable ascent continued when Sporting made Amorim their most expensive head coach ever, paying Braga 10 million euros for his services before immediately inserting a 20 million buyout clause of their own into his contract. An intelligent and creative manager, examples of Amarim's innovations include using a 3-2-5 formation in the build-up in order to progress play with quick and direct vertical combinations into the opposition half. He's also brilliant at nurturing young talent, with many giving him credit for discovering new Barcelona winger Francisco Trincao. If he can apply his method successfully at Sporting Lisbon, then a top 5 league club should be firmly in his sights. 2. Julien Stéphan There are plenty of reasons to get excited by Julien Stéphan, the Frenchman creating history at the head of Stade René. The 40-year-old has built on the excellent foundations left to him by his predecessor Sabri Lamouchi to turn Rennes into a genuine force of French football. In 2018-19, despite finishing 10th in Ligue 1, Stéphane managed to inspire his side to a stunning upset against PSG in the Coupe de France final, before guiding them to a historic third-place finish in the league a year later. Quite the feat for a man whose only managerial experience came with the Rennes B team prior to taking the top job. Key to Stéphane's success has been his willingness to support the club's emerging young talent, that has seen the likes of Ismail Assar and Rafinha be sold on for huge profits, while Eduardo Camavinga is a genuine star in the making. This season, Stéphane has welcomed the much sought-after duo of Jeremy Doku and Seru Girassi to the Roajon Park, and will know a good showing in their first ever Champions League campaign against Sevilla, Chelsea and Krasnodar will cement his status as the most exciting young French coach in the game. 1. 
Mikel Arteta. The streets of Highbury and Holloway are in full voice again after seeing Mikel Arteta transform the fortunes of Arsenal in just under 12 months in charge. Rewind to November 2019 and the Gunners were in disarray, with Unai Emery faltering in his mission to replace the great Arsene Wenger in the Emirates dugout. But since handing their former midfielder his first managerial role in football, balance has been restored and the taste of silverware returned. Arteta has added a steeliness to Arsenal's defence again, reinvigorating much maligned figures like Alexandre Lacazette, Granit Xhaka and David Luiz, and even convincing star striker Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang his future lies in North London. Success in the FA Cup plus an early season victory over Liverpool in the Community Shield has set the tempo for life at Arsenal under the 38-year-old. This summer the club backed him with the acquisitions of Gabriel from Lille and Thomas Partey from Atletico Madrid but more are needed in order to fully realise Arteta's vision of attack-led football. Once this happens, many believe the Gunners will be on the path to glory once more. So those were our top 10 new managers on the scene, but who do we miss out and who would you have included? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.